Alrighty, we are back. Let's see if I can arrange my windows properly and then we'll see what's what. I don't need that playing back for me. see how I can uh, set this up usefully. And then we will roll. And I think somebody just showed up. Hello. We have all the cameras working today. Of that, I am very pleased. And I have been spending the morning uh, sort of finishing up my posting of Sample Delay. Sample Delay has gone over well with people and been an enormous loser for uh, the YouTube algorithm. YouTube algorithm doesn't like it, but the people who use things like that apparently I have just put Eventide micro timeline out of business or something. Sorry. <laughs> I think people needed an open source, very simple digital delay. Why would you think you could sell that? That doesn't make any sense to me. Anyways. Mm. And my stream is bobbling and burbling, but it should be okay. I guess I'll find out. Oh, it's going from no data to plenty of data. I'll pop chat back in so that I can look at this big old window of stuff. I will do my level best to answer any questions, but today is not as much about answering questions unless it becomes about answering questions. It's probably not that much to be done um, explaining what a delay is. So instead, I'm going to see whether the system is working properly. It should be. Let's also take a moment to see whether Twisted Wave and this stuff is working properly. If it is, I'll hear a sound. Sure enough. And it is mono, but we don't have to mind that because we're not going to be dealing with a stereo plug-in today. I have something else in mind. I would like to jump back into two tape. That always goes over pretty well with folks, and it's been a while. It's actually been a while since I've put out a version of two tape. So Let's jump into my coding world. I also have power again. Last last week was really rough, man. The uh, first is daylight savings time, and uh, gosh, what even was uh, just a list of terrible things happening. It was daylight savings time and then a storm which took out power and I didn't get my internet back right away and just bleh. Been recovering from that all week. But uh, with a bit of luck, I am back. You'll notice that we're not doing uh, Orbit Kick and that's because Orbit Kick should be finished. I think I don't need to do any more on that. 
So we're going to have a look at two tape. So what I'm thinking is when I did two tape six, I overcomplicated things. I feel like I got too tricksy with it. I got too complicated. So I'm going to roll back to two tape five and take some different angles to directing it. In particular, the stuff that I was doing in there where I had lots of biquad filters, but they were interleaved and they were running inside the saturation control. And just there was a stuff going on. Now here, one thing I could do is let's open Twisted Wave. I don't know. I'm on 96k. Let's open up uh, Alien Kittens. This is probably why we're in mono, by the way. I think we're in mono because um, my native sample rate here is 96k. I'm not absolutely certain. I can have a look and find out. No, I'm apparently at 48. HDMI thinks it's 48 as well. Well, We will do what we can. <coughs> so what have we got? Let's make an effect stack and save it. And let's use VSTs because I like VSTs for the purposes of being able to run at 64-bit bus length in Reaper, which I use, that's largely why I use Reaper, is they let me do that. We have not yet put 2Tape6 in, which is fine because for now it is the same as 2Tape5. So here we go. Two different versions of the tape, and I believe that uh, one of them is going to be closer to what I'm trying to get than others. And we could also throw on. Um, is it in my recent effects? Maybe not. Uh, but I can get it from here. Span. And this way I can see kind of what's happening in the low bass here. So if I just play the old Alien Kittens. Just like that. And interestingly, this... Oh, I'll put this at zero. That was nice. down is about half volume. I'm very likely to go for a uh, more zero to one arrangement. I really tend to try to go for knobs without lots of labels on them 
where it's like this knob says louder. Turn it up to do that and listen to what it does. I'm strongly biased in favor of that. So some of the stuff that's going on in two tape six, I'm not going to want to keep. We have now padded these a little bit, so this is the dressing. I'm really trying to compare some of the tone qualities of these things. The knobs are essentially the same, but we don't have this all working quite the same. So. So basically where we're at here is um, I've been pursuing this code for some time. As you can see from the fact that it's 2 tape 5 and 2 tape 6. And I'm going to be looking into making 2 tape 7. Now there are a number of things that go on with this. Hey, Dimitri Frankel. Um, um, it shouldn't be outputting a pick, pick, pick noise. That's a interesting observation. Are you doing something like oversampling it, or I, you wouldn't? There would be no good reason to do that. Let's try it here. First, let me save this. Yeah, because if that happened to me, something that I had to fix, I'd need to drop everything and drop and do that. So let's find out. You're talking about Cubase, and so that would be the VST version. <laughs> one. Let's open up something else. Yeah, here this would be a real trick. A good way to check for things like that is to throw signs at it because then if there's any discontinuity it'll throw it quite obviously. So let's see. Okay, looks like we're not doing two tape after all. What are you going to do? It shows you how much of a week I've just had that this got by me. Let's fix this. We're not doing two tape after all. We can do that some other time. All the people who were going on about how, oh, you've just replaced uh, Eventide's micro delay, clearly uh, need to wait another 12 hours. Where 
this. So here is our code. We have, and you know something, there's something else that I can test here too because Oh, that's not the right thing. Don't mind me, I've had a hell of a week and said that just goes to show you something like this. I'm here for you though. I'll make it work. Oh, oh, and I should, I'm looking at the AU, so let's test it on the AU. There is a factor that, uh, see there's the AU. So here's the thing. We have a sample buffer that it's cycling through. It's putting samples in and then taking them back out. The question is, is it hiccuping in some way that, uh, oh no, you're fine. Don't have to worry about it. It's on, it's on me to make these things come out right the first time. I guess I was, I was spending all of my time testing this on uh, drums and it wasn't as easy to hear on drums goes to show you, sometimes you have to test things on all of the outputs. So listen to this. So, 9 milliseconds, we have a sound. 99 milliseconds, we have the same sound. What's going on here is that we have the whole thing cycling through this buffer And there's something wrong with the way that it's looping through the large collection of samples that it has. So there's a couple of things that we can do here. Offset is being made to be less than the maximum amount of time available. but it's still hiccuping as it cycles through its maximum time. <coughs> so one thing we can do very quickly is find out whether this has to do with the length of our time. Our time goes up to about 16,385. And it looks as if it should be staying within the limits of that but it's kind of not. So we could do something where we're limiting the maximum amount and that can only happen if you're at a very very high sample rate. So this shouldn't change anything but if we set this to 74 or I'll tell you what, let's do something even more extreme. But not that. We just made it a much smaller loop. And we have to build it again because I haven't built it in a bit. This is what this system does. So the question is, did this stop making it do a ticking noise or does it do the ticking noise much faster? If it's a matter of that number being too large, then it will have stopped it doing the ticking noise. If it's a matter of the algorithm not being quite right, It'll still do the ticking noise, but it'll do it much faster. And you can hear it more easily on like a deep bass sign. And I wasn't able to hear it at all on drums and busy sounds. So it's just as well, you know, I am in your, you know, I am at your service as far as um, 
bringing that to my attention because it could have got by me and it would have been a sad thing. I have a bunch of people getting excited about using it and then finding out that like I don't want anybody like printing their mix with this on a base and then getting surprised by the fact that there's a noise happening. So. so is this not making a ticking noise or is it making the ticking noise much faster? It's making the ticking noise much faster. So we just learned part of what's happening. When stuff like this happens, I might as well make full use of it. Let's undo some of these changes. That also means that there's no point in uh, I can't set it like this, but so G count is going down. So if G count is less than one or it's larger and it shouldn't be larger, then it becomes the maximum time. And we keep going down but should it be if it's less than one or should it be less than zero? Let's try. And there's no point in having it be to count as larger or equal to max time because we're making it be equal to max time. And then we have this code here and that could also be where things are going wrong. So I'm a little concerned about that, but we'll see. So let's see whether that helps at all. I thought we needed to test it a certain way. Now there is a possibility that having made that change um, it'll now just crash because it needed to be the, the first thing. We've worked out that it's the way that this cycles through that's causing the problem. What do we got now? Okay. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend a bit of this stream getting this together and then I'm going to go off stream. I will write today off for streaming on the basis of this is just depressing, but I have a fix now, so there's that. And here is the VSC. And it's doing the thing. But this thing that says G count, that needs to be zero. That can't be one. So let's build another copy and put it where I need it as far as doing more of this work. What we have up here is other things. For instance, verb tests is the code that I'll need to use in order to do the uh, Bracassi modeling. But right now I have simpler things to contend with than Bricasti modeling. And I have not yet earned a Bricasti by earning enough money that I can reasonably afford to go get one. So we're not worrying about that right now. I have a little self-imposed rule saying that I will get to the point of being able to, uh, you know, clear a certain, go it's, goal stuff is weird. Like pa Patreon has recently announced that in an upcoming month they're going to remove everybody's goals because as near as they can tell, and my experience checks this out as well, and it's going to say the same thing both of these places. I need to change count. 
to zero. And then I'll need to recompile it for all of the different versions of everything. Although interestingly, this is such a brief fix that one thing that I can do when I go into the signed versions and so on, rather than bring everything over again, what I can do is just edit the signed version and recompile that, rather than going through the whole process of copying over the original version and going through the, like this is a page pages worth of stuff that I have to do in order to make the Windows version work. This is a page worth of stuff that I have to do in order to go from the audio unit to the signed audio unit. This is a page's worth of stuff that I have to do in order to get the uh, the Mac VST to be the signed Mac VST. And I have to go through these stages for every single plugin of the hundreds that I've made. But this time I probably don't because I have one character to change in all of these and we will find out very quickly whether that is the case for this thankfully simple fix build succeeded and the Mac VST and if the Mac VST works then the Windows VST will also work so firstly I'm going to drag that to the desktop And I'm going to plunk it in there. And remember how the last time I ran the uh, Mac VST in Twisted Wave on these spaces, it did the thing that uh, Dimitri spotted for me. Let's see where it is at now. We got it. So I'm going to call that fixed, and I will talk to you while I do some more of this. Uh, some of this stuff has to be done on this little old laptop, and uh, once I'm finished with that, I will finish with streaming and scramble around fixing it for everybody. But bits of this I can do here and now, and I will I'll stop doing the stream. I, I have no patience today for trying to do the uh, Linux VST version on the, uh, ooh, I just realized something helpful. I'm going to still need to do the, the Windows. But I think I can update all of the Linux ones by just editing them because the Linux ones, the code that it compiles sort of lives on the machine. So I don't actually have to copy that Linux stuff over, but I will have to copy it over for all of the things on GitHub. But that's fine, that's only fair. So we have two working plugins and we're going for the third. And we're going to do it the usual way rather than a simpler way. And in some ways this is a simpler way. And then once I've got this and once I've done the uh, Linux version on the virtual machine in this box, I will say good day to the stream and immediately go about doing the other things that I need to do. So yeah, if anybody has any questions that aren't about this bug fix, um, ask them now because I'm not going to be going until one in the afternoon today. I'm definitely going to need a rest after this. It takes it, takes it out of me when something goes sideways on release. I am now glad that this wasn't the biggest hit of uh, uh, audio release. What am I talking about? Why am I bringing this in? YouTube release. I put out a, a video. The video didn't succeed very well, and I'm pleased about that now. Hey, Jess. Doing a little fixing. 
So what am I doing again? This last week has half killed me. It was not good. So that only it only goes to show you the state that I'm reduced to where something like this can slip by me. But then I was listening entirely to, I mean, the entire video, you can't really hear what was happening. Dude, use stereo doubler on drums if you want to. Sure, why not? What's, what's stopping you? Oh, you have a thousand questions? Ask them real quick. I'm going to try to be focused enough to successfully do this bug fix. And I probably will. I probably can. So I'll just sort of try to methodically work through all of these things. Let's see. So there's the VST folder. This is presumably the yet Mac VST folder. That's what I need to look at. And in fact, I can hit space and see what's going on here and see that I have G count fixed in both of these places. So this is the thing that I need to bring into the Windows environment. Uh, dude, I just failed to do a simple delay loop and you're asking me for a VST synth? No, talk to the Surge people. They're much better at that than me. But what I am doing is launching a virtual machine so that I can have uh, Windows. And we're going to do this page of stuff, reporting things to Windows VST. Thankfully, I won't have to do the full Monty of all of the things, but I have to do some of the things. And yeah, it sure took it, this happening sure took the wind out of my sails. So we're not going to do an extended stream today. It's just not practical. VST project goes into here. Oh, let's not open that. I need to drag in these things. And then I need to open Visual Studio. Once that is opened, Control Shift O. Means I can open the project. And there it is. There we name it, sample delay, then option shift or alt shift A. Let's me load the header file. Alt shift A here. And using control, let's me load both of these files. They're in the right place, and that means I can build the 32 bit. Looks like that's been built. Set this to, I'm keeping an eye out for more questions. Uh, 64. And 64 appear and then click anywhere else so that it accepts both of those things and we build again. We can shut this whole thing down. Now, did you just work or did you not? Yes, you did. Good. And we'll copy them over to VST plugins here, just cause. And this I hold control and click this and this and this because we don't want to keep the DB file. And I rename the folder. And 
drag it to my Mac desktop as well. Then delete that. Shut that down. Oh, also talking to me about VST synths, I direct people to search because it is an awesome open source project with some of the best people. But if you're talking about VST synths that have more of an Air Windows sound, look into Full Bucket. I don't think Full Bucket is open source, but Full Bucket uses double precision calculating buses. I can get my sound out of full bucket synths more easily than I can out of Surge, as much as I endorse Surge, and I think it is for that reason. In particular, uh, I think Synth Air is one that I quite liked. Alrighty, onwards. Close the Mac VST thing and we got these going on. You know, I don't think I need to be dragging the code around. I just need to drop it into my saved Win VST and then I'm going to update everything on actual GitHub for the rest of it. And maybe it's a good thing that uh, when I checked, um, Paul had not done the building things into Rack. If he hasn't, that's actually a good thing. I will have fixed the problem by the time he gets to it. We'll see. If not, he just has to hit the button again and it will be fixed. So let's see, next thing. The Linux version is the next thing. I'm not, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm keeping a local copy of Linux, so I need to up edit that just on principle. Here's what we've got there. That one needs to be a zero, and this one needs to be a zero. And now that code has been updated. And now I need to fire up the virtual Linux box. I'll be doing the same thing for the Raspberry Pi, but that's going to wait until my stream is finished. Oh, but I am going to want to use this to get the plugin back out of it. Firstly, sample delay, sir, you need to be deleted with prejudice. Boop. That's the one that clicks. Now we go to the source. Sample delay proc. Let's open that with mousepad, because why not? Seems like a perfectly fine thing to use. And same deal. I can't have this G count zero one thing. It has to say G count zero. Hmm. I'm not sure whether it honors Mac things. Control less A, so it wanted control less. Well, let's find out whether it updated by repeatedly opening some of these things after having closed them. If I open it again, and now it has the correct number, then I know that I did it. Zero and zero, sure enough. And that means 
I can go directly to the build folder, open the terminal here, and and then make. And now we will hang out just a little bit longer while it grinds through this stuff. Also, time I started on this. I think I oh, didn't even shut down my audio. Go figure. Yeah, maybe I should take the week off if I'm like dropping the ball so hardcore. Oh, well, Rain Dog Red, I'm happy to answer that question. That actually makes me feel a little better after I screwed the programming part up so bad. Hang on, folks. Wait for me just a moment. There's nothing all that much to watch. Well, I suppose we can watch this. Sure, why not? Um, I was just like, no, I am not uh, typing in my password on a video screen in 1080p. You probably could slow it down and see where my fingers went. But I covered my fingers up and I made it be a small poster stamp size screen. So I should be good. That is That is a derp that I'm not going to do. Thank you. But I'll tell you. I'm glad that you like the guitar sound, in particular the most recent one. Yeah, I'm pushing for that kind of stuff. And the way that I'm doing that is I'm using uh, electric guitars. When I use effects, I'm using a particular sort of pedal board for it. It's uh, a place called thegigrig.com. And they do these switchers called Quartermaster. It's the same people that do, or the, one of the guys that does the YouTube show, the pedal show, or that pedal show, is the guy that runs this company. And he uses his own pedal boards for their videos, and I'm using one of them for my stuff. So if I'm using a pedal board, I can switch any particular uh, pedal into the chain with these sort of gold-plated contact relays inside it. No, it wasn't Groove. It wasn't. And I'm going into a Epiphone Valve Junior. That is not the most expensive amp. I have uh, modified that amp. It has uh, larger and more expensive film capacitors inside it and I also try to get good tubes for it, but it is still basically an Epiphone, Epiphone Valve Junior. That is an all-tube amp. There are no transistor stages in it. It's not super high gain, but you don't always want super high gain. And the sound of the output of that small tube amp, tiny little tube amp, is going to a Celestian Greenback speaker. It's a super low power Celestian Greenback speaker, so it's loud as anything, considering that it's such a small amp. It's like a, a flea watt amp, right? A valve junior. And this super, super low uh, wattage Celestian Greenback is in an isolation cap that I designed. I have a whole bunch of I, a video. I, I have one video, but it's long. On the construction of this uh, isolation cab, the concept of the isolation cab is to have the, the the speaker box and then the microphone box, right? So you have an isolation cab and it's got the one box and it's got the other box. And they're usually completely filled with damping so that it's quiet. What I am doing is I constructed a box with a bunch of non-parallel walls. You can, I, I used, I did it from like two by four sheets of birch plywood. And I didn't actually measure it all that much as I just came up with the way of assembling it. 
and I kind of winged it together. But this particular box is designed so that there is virtually no damping inside it. And the two chambers are slightly connected with each other. Like the back of the speaker box goes through a sort of long extended port and it can leak through into the microphone side of the box. And as a result, it's this container that is full of impossibly loud sound, right? There is very little, there's a little tiny bit of damping. It's in the video, but there's very little damping in there. So when I put uh, one of the Air Windows SM57s, I have another video for that. There is a an FM57 mod that I used, but what you're hearing on that is in fact basically an SM57. The positioning of it is fairly careful. I mean, I took pains to, to place it in a good place. But um, most of what's going on is it's this very close mic'd, super loud guitar speaker. But then behind the speaker and behind the microphone, it's in, it, it's so loud in there that I had to make another box of birch ply to go around the first box because otherwise it was not really that much less loud than having the speaker in open air. It turned out to be a very, very bad isolation cabinet as far as isolating sound from the outside world. But getting really huge loud guitar sounds like what you were saying, your post-punk early 80s kind of stuff, that was typically the people went into studios with really loud amps. Well, you can force things to be allowed by putting them in reverberant spaces. If you have a relatively small uh, PA system, for instance, but you sit it in a room that's real echoey, it's easy to make the sound pressure levels be painfully or ear damagingly loud, even if your PA isn't that big, if it's in a relatively small room and it's reverberating a lot. I was at a convention once where that happened and there was practically a fight between different sound guys because one of them was the sound guy for the main room and the other one was getting his chance of like playing music for this smaller uh, post-con party room. And he just pushed it really loud to the point where it completely hurt. It was a much smaller PA system, but it hurt because it was that reverberant of a room. And that's what I'm doing on purpose with the isocab design that I made. So taking that in, the rest of the recording chain for that guitar is the SM57 into an API pre, as I do like good microphone pre's, but it's not like some expensive fancy tube whatever mic pre, it's basically a unimpeachable quality normal mic pre. And you could probably get away with less in this particular context even. And the API, API Pre feeds a Motu 16A. The Motu 16A is basically a prosumer. It's not like crazy performance like the Lavries or anything like that. And it works just fine. And that's it. That's it, that's the sound. Part of the sound is not throwing a lot of plugs on it. Instead, part of the sound is getting the sound right going into the mic. <clears throat> and that's why I'm getting some of the tone cues for the loudness of the guitar sound acoustically inside the ISO cab. I'm doing stuff there where if I can make it work that way, it doesn't need to be fixed after, oh, I see that my we've gotten two pocket verbs and so it has stalled. It's, it's busily trying to compile pocket verbs. I have not removed the transformer, no. The mod in the 57 for, it's the Air Windows SM57 mod. And what I'm doing there is cutting away plastic objects on it. I wonder if I can show you. Give me a second. I'm going to go scampering around finding this. Do I have one here? Do I have 
one C word there. Oh, but I'm going to need to grab the pi anyhow, so I've got that. I'm sad I couldn't find it, but I will try a little bit harder and then I'll just tell you. I'm sad I still can't find it however I grabbed some stuff that I'm going to need for instance the little old Mackie that I made Mackie around I need to be measuring stuff about this for some of my console things so I might as well grab that that would be measuring you and I'll be using this. And let me have one last look. I would really like to be able to show this. Oh! Nailed it. Nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. And the compile is done. So here's the deal. The 57 mod, and this is like the one that I have in the ISO cab, involves, here, as long as I'm messing around with this, I'll need to stop pretty soon. But while I'm at it, we might as well show you. Here's the kind of thing that I did. It has cut away part of the plastic basket exposing this. This is a little plastic panel and it is covering the coil. If you take that off it doesn't sound right. It needs this plastic panel because the plastic panel is part of the sound for what makes the 57 sound the way that it does. I have aluminum tape over it because it damps that plastic thing. Otherwise it'll ring, it'll, it'll bring colorations to it. But you also need to have 
those holes where they are. Those holes are part of what gives the 57 its sound. If you are off axis, like if your sound is coming sideways, it will hit some of these places on the microphone diaphragm first, and it's not perfectly symmetrical. So it will cause the diaphragm to, if it, the diaphragm resonates, and you have a sound that's off axis, it will make the diaphragm resonate in an asymmetrical kind of way. In fact, that's the same for if it's on axis like this. And like I said, the modification includes taking all the various stuff so you can literally see behind there the coil. This is the, this is the microphone element in here. And inside the mic is the transformer because the transformer is also part of the sound of this effect. Overdriving that transformer by hitting it with a really, really loud guitar, you can put this like right up against the speaker cone. It's possible to have too loud of a sound and needing to pull it back because it'll start oversaturating. That is the uh, Air Windows SM57 design. And yeah, you can trim away the plastic parts until you get to this point, at which point you stop. You don't go beyond this point. But this little plastic plate, this little flat plate here, that is what you want up against the speaker. And all of the little framework around in front of it is not helping you get your sound. Although it's not as good for being a microphone to speak into at this stage, because there's no foam on it or anything. Mind you, you can put a foam windscreen on that. sit the over here while I'm at it and we're gonna go through some of these little things and then I'm going to say goodbye for the day so that I can continue uh, bug fixing this scenario but yeah so I need to use this to drag sample delay to here. And we're going to eject that. And this particular virtual machine, it doesn't like it if I stop it. So when you see weird t creation times, on this, that's because this Linux box sits in suspended animation. If I shut it down, it doesn't want to start up again, so I have to suspend it every time. There is a video documenting that mod, yes. Now let me fire this up again to copy over these other plugins. Command drag means that I Delete it off of the uh, target. Copy it to the target, delete it off of the other. Eject. And then, let's see, this can sit here for the moment. Not going to be doing anything. Move with this so this can go back over where it normally lives. I actually have another one of these coming. I had an update where I needed it to include a line of uh, pitch shift formulas for working with Reaper and being able to like drop things up or down in note. So I went and made that. And now let's go through here and edit every single one of these while I'm at it. Uh, 
course, the here is our regular audio unit. And I'll open everything with BB Edit just cause. If I was being really clever, I could try to do that for all of the things in the entire code base, but I'm not sure I feel safe doing that. I know that this fix works for the particular context in which it is. And I'm going to want to do the signed version, so let's do likewise. But, uh, oh, and I should keep an eye on the questions. Okay, no more, no further questions right at the moment. There's a side of you. Likewise, open it and maybe edit and change the score number. And let's actually go and tend to that. ST distribute and because that could speed this process up a little bit and that would be nice. So now we'll see whether this build works or not. Turns out it's been like close to an hour. Yeah, so that's the guitar, that's the guitar mod anyway. Uh, let's see, we have to reset that to local silicon and Intel. The rest is done correctly, so let's see whether we can archive. That did build. And that would be the AU, so rather than be in VST distribute, we need to be in AU distribute and export it to there. And in this form, you do not actually go into the build fold, the code folder to find the build. The build lives somewhere entirely elsewhere because it just does. It's like, okay, fine. In this case, the build lives somewhere entirely elsewhere. Yay. Sample delay, sample delay proc. This is the Mac VST version. And here we are. We need to be zero. Having a big screen for coding is actually a lot nicer than the antique laptop, but I need to be able to build for older systems. So I do care about that kind of a lot. And again, every time I shut this stupid thing down, it decides to only set itself for my Mac, but I want it to be any Mac, Apple, Silicon, Intel. So I need to reset it to a different setting. And then when I do archive it's going to be trying to put things in the AU distribute folder but I don't want that so it needs to be let's see developer ID application for the signed certificate and then release for the build configuration and that is correct it shouldn't have a problem building and it didn't and I hit a distribute content build products and then I have to navigate to the correct folder and that's going to be VST distribute I just called it that. It doesn't necessarily have to be that. That's just my organizing way. And you know, you got to organize this stuff where it gets on top of you, as you can easily see. And now that I have two signed VSTs built, or two signed Mac plugins built, I can do my time consuming. Uh, and O for open and down arrow to navigate to this place 
and drag these to the sitemac folder. Same deal. This deep folder hierarchy that I have to navigate for every single time I make one of these things. These are now the signed ones, and we make it into a disk image. And that goes inside the uh, result. It's almost like I was coding something, except for it's just keeping track of all of this stuff. I put come an incoherent babbling fool, as one does. And let's also Older item, please replace. Older item, please replace. So now I have my disk image file. And the stuff in these folders are fixed. But we're still fixing the GitHub repository. So this was the sign. Yes, yes, yes it was. So now I got to go over to the regular BST and do likewise. Here's a regular BST, sample delay proc, maybe edit, find the one character that needs to be updated and do that. All of this stuff needs to be fixed for in case anybody needs to grab a particular section of code out of the code base. Like wherever people are starting from, I want them to be able to work with the good and fixed code. Did I just do the Linux? Let's find out. Only thing I need to do is this bit, so let's see. BB edit. No, I did not. I did not fix that. Zero. And and I did just do the how many different things I'm keeping track of. This is how I get lost here. Okay, I got that one. Or at least I got that version of that one and a couple of versions of that one. Good. That's Mac VST, so the only remaining one is Win VST. That one sorted by date modified. Open this up in BB Edit and same deal. And that was the last of the GitHub fixes. So what we're going to do real quickly before we... Um, I'm actually kind of gratified at how this worked. Um, is we're going to... that we have made, commit-m means message for the commit. Nine files changed, 12 insertions, 12 deletions. So it affects this one thing in nine places. And Go and tell Paul 
in case he has done his push. I do not care what's new in Discord land. Paul, I had to fix a bug that was making a ticking noise and sample delay. Hope you can re-click it to fix this live now. He is traveling, so I hope he is able to hit the bug. We'll see. See, I mean, he is in my very small collection. It does not appear to either he's not uh, alive or is not showing that he is live. He's got a update, and apparently there were a few minor bugs in third track. So there is that. Fair enough. That is not the Air Windows thing. I'm just telling him on this thing. I'll keep that open for the moment. So that I can see whether he responds or not. I don't think I have any more password typing to do, so I don't have to conceal the screen so hard. We'll go through the same. Oh. No, 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 no. I ain't quite done. I suppose I can go part way through this. I'll go part way through this before saying good day. So that I no longer need to have open, but I will. And I'll tell you why. Ooh, or do I? Probably do. I'm just trying to figure out whether I can run the Raspberry Pi and plug it into something useful so that I can see what the heck I'm doing. Ben, that's the, the least of my concerns at the moment. Um, I will be healthy later. For well, right now, I gotta figure out how to do this. I don't know, maybe I will just disconnect my camera feed. Yeah, let's do all of this while we're at it. I think I can unplug that without hurting anything. Yeah, because if I can if I can run this uh, Raspberry Pi without uh, stop and stream, oh, well, the stream has mostly gone away. Anywho, um, maybe it went away because the streaming died. I don't know. But if I can do this, I can stream all the way through the entire bug fix and uh, upload, and that'd be kind of cool. I wouldn't mind finishing off the stream by being like, okay, go and download this now. But so far, you still can't. You can't quite do that just yet. So I'm still working on it. I'm going to want to do that later. That could be next week. Two tape seven can be next week. Struggling crowd around. Okay, so I 
we want to update this stuff having to do with the Raspberry Pi build. That part's easy, having it show on the screen, maybe somewhat less. And I'm also going to want to power it somehow, so I need to drive one of my cables, namely the USB 3 cable is how I power this little Raspberry Pi. And this cable sometimes confuses me by not wanting to plug into this computer. So, oh, that's not even the right one, darn it. I'm still here for questions. If there's anybody who is there, I realize that you wandered off, but I can't. I'm not done with work yet. I'll wander off as soon as I can. And then it will curl up in a little ball for the rest of the week. I promise you that. But until then, we're going to push this bug fix out. We are totes going to push this bug fix out. So, let's unplug the screen by which I normally see what's happening on the camera. Plug in the Raspberry Pi. It should show me that. And I don't see. I don't see the SD card in the desktop, so I must have ejected it. I'm going to be needing to plug it back in. And this is plugged in, and this should be giving me visuals. But it's kind of not. And that's not awesome. Oh, wait, are we just not powered up properly? What are you doing? Maybe it doesn't want to power up if it's not connected to a screen. Try it again. Power up, please. Show me screen. Oh, something's happening. I can't show you this screen, but I see something happening. That might get me what I need. Or it might not. Oh, or it might. Okay. You can't see it, but there's a screen up there that I usually use for my camera, and it has the Raspberry Pi on it. That's what I needed. So what we're going to do is plug the SDI card in. We're opening it in File Manager. And I gotta open another file manager window because we're going to VST build. We're going to go to source and remove the one that will be making the clicking noises. Hmm, I'm glad that you like stereo chorus and vibrato. And I have found and Deleted. Oh, no, it only lets me move to trash. This Raspberry Pi is a wimpy version of Unix, man. I bet I could delete it in terminal, though. Then we go to the source folder. It's a most unsatisfactory version of Linux. There's a lot of cumbersome stuff in here. And, oh look, it says open. Will it give me it in a text editor or something annoying? It's opening it in a file called Genie. That's going to be enough, I think. And same thing I've done in several places. Gcount less than one. It needs to become Gcount 
equals zero. Got it there. Got it there. File submenu should give me a save. You can close that. If I reopen it, it opens in GNE again and is the version I want. Will it let me command Q? Very likely not. We'll just use the close box. And having done so now, I got to navigate back down to build folder so that I can get what I need and then I need to open up terminal which is not going to let me go to that folder in any convenient way. Ah, great for synths, good. Yeah, bear in mind, stereo chorus, you can also do that with um, double lay. Double lay is a plugin that I did for Terry Manning and he asked for the specific thing. I was able to do it and so I did it. Didn't have any obvious bugs in that one, thankfully. If, if if I had, he would have let me know about it very, very loudly. CD. Oh no. CD bar H completes to home. Good. P completes to pi. I'm just trying to do this dumb thing. And capital V? No. Where do I need to go from here? Pi folder. Well, that should be giving me VST build. Why is it not? Capital S. There we go. Got there. And then complete the build. We have now navigated to the correct place. Uh, I'm a little bit worried. Is this going to work? I hope it works. I deleted the file, so it should be smart enough to tell. If it isn't, I'm going to have to deal with something dot dot and make are you going to find that you don't have a built binary otherwise I'm going to have to figure out what to do to make this up it appears like yay good 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 that's what i wanted to see it tried to build the thing it's going to have built a binary it's like when it builds the thing and the binary is already there it's like it doesn't do it it skips over it in fact i know it skips over it because otherwise pocket verse would take forever to do as it normally does we have now built the pi version of the thing i need Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Copy it over to this. Eject it. And now having ejected it, I can remove this dumb little thing and put it over here because I'm not going to be needing it. plug this guy in. There it is. Let me command, since this is macOS, drag this over to Linux Arm, which is where I put the Pi stuff. As you can see, what I've got long one you can't see because it's too small, but if you could see, you'd see that I have Console Zero, Orbit Kick, Path Nutty, and Sample Delay waiting to be released. 
No, I don't need shuttle open anymore. I guess Paul is not going to see this right at the moment. Isn't that always the way that something goes wrong and needs to be fixed before you go on vacation? Poor Paul. We did the best we could. I will mention in the, in the rack forum that the most recent one still has a fix to be done on sample delay. I'm not sure if rack people need sample delay that badly anyway. And we're going to be using drop DMG very soon, so there's that. Here's the folder in which I put stuff. Here's the categories I organize things in. Here's all the stuff being put into the folder, and here is not path 90, thank you, uh, sample delay, being put specifically into the pi subfolder. It looks actually very similar to the, uh, the Intel Linux version. And it's going as smoothly as I could hope. It's definitely, this is, this is gonna, I'm gonna be curled up into a ball for the rest of the week after last week and then this on top of everything. I do not like it when stuff fails on launch, but that says maybe. Let me uh, empty the busted stuff and shut down this for while I'm at it. Oh God, what have I done? Go away, I've launched a web browser in the Raspberry Pi. That's the last thing I wanted to do. Log out, shut down, big on for now. And let go, thank you. I can put away my cables while I'm at it. Now at some point I'm gonna to get to do music again. There will come a day when I get to do music again. It will happen. One day, one day I'll be able to do music again. But by God, I can fix problems with my stuff for people who use my plugins. I care about that more than dumb, stupid music I might make. Anyways, I'm waiting on the uh, a module that I want. I'm waiting on a drum module that I want, so. And that is going to be a long time coming. Let's see now. The microphone can go back there. Okay, so where are we at? We are um, copying all of this stuff over into the collections. I do not need to copy over Airwindowpedia or what because those are already done. But what I need to do is hold down options so it copies rather than deleting and do this. This is the arm, it's in pie category. This is the Intel. This is the Retro Mac AU. This is the Retro Mac BST. This is the Retro Windows 32. I keep saying older version and that is, that is good. That's what I wanted. And I'm pretty sure I just did this. Sample delay today at 11.46. Yep, that one's from today. 
and lastly the Windows 64 and I'm going to put some of these guys into the retro container and we're going to make all of these into downloadable files as they're supposed to be oh god everybody left okay if you stay you'd see when i'm ready to update things for you this needs to be compressed This needs to be compressed. When I finish doing this, I can literally fix the bug for people. Until I finish doing this, the bug is not fixed for people. And I can probably bounce onto online and post to all of the forums while I'm at it. This is becoming another one of those things where it's like, let's show you what I have to go through for each of these things. It is, in fact, work and it's not necessarily even the amount of time that it takes it's the amount of stuff to keep track of there's a reason i don't like lightly commit to new platforms all the time so drop dmg it's going to be creating that a drop of more coffee and it's finished and now i need to do so in Mac VSDs, if I drop GMG in the folder, it's often failed to do that. So I compress it into a zip and then it's okay working with the folder, but it doesn't want to do it otherwise. And that is unpleasant, but so it goes. And then having done those things, oh, 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 hang on, slow down, hang on, hang on, hang on. I do need to delete that, but I am out of sync. So this needs to go away because I am damn sure I did not sign this. So we're running a program that code signs the uh, the signed Mac versions of things. And so I got to do that. I'm going to have to do that with all of the signed things, which is the actual plugin itself. And then also the collection of signed Mac AUs and the collection of signed Mac VSTs. Those all need to be signed. So we're going to do that. Only then can I update everything. Although, although I could update everybody else. That absolutely could be a thing. I like the cut of your drip. That sounds good. Let's do that. Which does not mean necessarily that people are using this, but if anybody was downloading from the collections, oh, don't you rename the name. That's not what I meant. Ah. Once it's finished uploading that stuff, certain things are now downloadable in collections. I'm also going to have to update Patreon. I told Patreon about this ahead of time. I'll have to tell them. Well, whatever. It is what it is. And there's two minutes on that, and I don't know how long on the signed raw upload. Although, although once I have the signed raw upload and rezip it, I can update that, and that will be a nice little skip ahead. I can do that while the signed other things are still going. It is 12 a. God knows, maybe it'll go until one o'clock just doing this. Uh. Well, I'll tell you, I'll feel much better when it's done. I will feel much better when the bug is fixed and people can get the bug fix. Any any minute that the bugged version is out there, I feel bad. 
I imagine people like blindly throwing it on something and doing their final mix and pressing it on final records before I get to the fix, which of course is not going to happen. That's crazy talk. But it scares me. I don't want. So here's what I wanted to see. Sample delay notarized. And if I drag this over to here, and I can throw away this folder, the stuff that's sitting in my trash is epic infinite gigabytes of, of garbage from all the video making and everything. It's like upwards of 150 gigabytes just to put the video together of all the different things. So that's the new sample delay DMG. So if I compress this, I can totally throw away that. Don't need to refer to upcoming any longer. I have already done all those things. And if I go to this 2023 folder, here's where sample delay went. So. That is now updated. If you downloaded it off of the link for just directly sample delay, re-download it now. You've got it. It's live. We done it. We got there. And it is now time for me to sign these things and update them. So signed Mac AU. This will take the longest, but now we are clear for jumping on and telling all the different forms and places what has happened and what I have done. And I will still need to have access to this. Although one thing I can do is go to the media fire because I have everything other than the signed stuff, which can be updated. So let's do that now as well. And plugins back up. Everything that's not signed Mac. place and once that's done here's the sign I use waiting for the result of the process this will take a little while it's going to be trugging along doing that for a while but I can see the other stuff going and we're getting closer and closer to have gotten through this horrible process it's it's less horrible when I have the plugin done and I think it's actually good. It's more horrible when I'm frantically scrambling to fix a problem that somebody has found. That's always the most horrible. And it's not your fault for finding it. It's my fault for stressing out over this stuff more than I should. But I mean, I'm doing this is my job. I'm doing this for a job, so. And we will do two tape seven next week. There's absolutely not time or, or mojo left for it this time. Oh, but I should plug in the laptop because this is going to run out of juice and drop off the internet if I'm not careful. Let's do that. Uh, once I'm finished with that, though, the, the last thing is the signed uh, DMGs, the signed disk images. So there's that. And hey, I did end up uh, getting this out. That's kind of cool. In fact, 
some of this I can use. Uh, so plug these wires. This being the Mackie I need to run signals through, get some examples so that I can dial in a little closer on what it would take to make a um, console M. Console M being Mackie. Can we make that be a thing? Maybe we can. Stray aux returns. One, six, six, seven, and eight. And ten, and eleven, and twelve. Yeah, I'm seeing whether I can get eight inputs into here so that I can hear what the summing bus acts like when I run it. But that's another story. And I won't necessarily do that on stream because it will involve really obnoxious sounds, most likely. And hey, we're done with that part. So that's cool. Still waiting on the sign things. I think maybe I will have everything updated. But I don't need to have these files here anymore. Everything goes into the overfilling wastebasket. And now we are awaiting results from Apple. Because we've got the uh, collection of AUs with the one plug in there that got fixed with one digit one number went from a one to a zero and that is the whole fix fixing the ticking bug and making it go away and there it is so same deal for the vsts but it will be a little quicker and i don't need bb edit to be open any longer Here's the sign Mac AUs. What happens when you do that is then people can open it on their machines without it throwing all kinds of crazy warnings at you. And we'll submit the VST version. That will go a little faster. Not lots faster, sadly, but a little faster. The AUs seem to take the longest. And once I've done all of those things, I can rest. For values of rest equaling go and tell everybody that they need to re-download. But, hey, being able to tell people go and re-download rather than, oh yeah, you're right, it's boned and I don't have a fix right now. It's better to be able to say, please go and re-download. I have already fixed it. That's preferable. I like that better. If you got to go through this kind of thing, you got to go through it. It's nicer to have the fix and be able to tell people, it's fixed now. Sorry about that. It's freaking waiting on the. Let's let's upload things while we are waiting. Let's all upload to here, and let's upload to here. You're going to ask replace, and I'm going to say why yes yes replace. And meanwhile, we're waiting for the result from the VSTs. Once I have finished having the VSTs checked for problems and signed, then I can upload those things to these two places that I am currently uploading the AU. So if you're waiting for the, there's no reason to wait for the whole collection of the AUs. Just download the original, download the release file again. Sample, uh, sample delay dot zip. 
that has all the bug fixes in it by now. I'm pretty sure I caught the uh, signing the signed ones before uploading it to the relevant place, I think. Sure hope so. I remember going to that folder. I assume that means that I put it in the right place. If I didn't, people will doubtless tell me it's still broken and then I will die another thousand deaths making that be fixed. I can go and test. Let's go and test. Copy this here. Open it up, fill up the overflowing trash barrel even more. 1218. I'm going to say that that is likely and means that it is in fact correct. Those are all today. That was today. The Intel Linux version doesn't count because it's confused and living in a time warp. Yeah. We're going to say that's okay. We're probably getting pretty close to the VSTs being done. At least I hope we are. And if by the if people still have questions about anything, hopefully not about that. We're done about this. Then ask because I'm about to go offline pretty soon. VSTs, DMG. This stuff can go to the overflowing trash barrel. I wonder if I can get a get info on that. Oh god, 159 gigabytes of stuff in the trash, which normally is empty. And my VSTs goes to here and goes to here. replace the previous version we are getting to oh god the the streaming thing seems to be throwing red lights oh dear alrighty the VST collection is now done. It is on the media fire. It is on the 1231. Yep, sure enough. We don't need Cyberduck to be there any longer. We don't need these things because they have been uploaded. So the only thing remaining before I bid you good day is Go to all of the places and tell them that the thing has happened. So, Patreon, we are. It's possible that somebody is telling me it's broken from here. <laughs> yes, I don't know, Paul might be able to do that. Uh, somebody wants the AU sample delay, which declares latency and gives you negative delays. Uh, not impossible. We'll see. That's not my first concern right now. And where do I find the post that I just made so that I can update it? Here it is. People are saying nice things. And I need to tell them mm, can't type. No bug.
I'm going to do a non-smiley face because I'm not feeling that smiley about all of this. But please re-download Sample Delay from wherever you grabbed it. There was an audio bug and I fixed it in every place it exists, so you have to go download it again, I'm afraid. Eh. Sideways feet. Copy. Post. Now I have to go to all the other places. That would be... I have them in a line here. Gear space. There has not been a comment about that. So it is falling off of the list. People do not see my stuff if it is not the subject of conversation. Talks on acid. Often there is not a comment there. I enjoyed the Docs and Acid forum. It's fun. A Facebook group. Fairly likely there is a comment there of some kind. People seem happy about that. Only one only the person on my live stream noticed that it has a tick. Of course now it doesn't, but now I have to tell everybody, go and fix. KVR never notices anything I do. Or comments about it anyhow. And PRW, only 14 people have seen this. Well, PRW is like the industry heavyweights. So, I have made that comment. Click reply. I wonder if this is going to make a smiley. Usually in dogs and acid, I do the colon teeth colon, which makes a weird snaggle tooth smiley, which is very common face. My comment. PVR. And PRW. So the nice thing about this is that if anybody took this long to notice that I had even made a post, I've already fixed it before they even saw it. So that's cool. And I think it probably doesn't hurt all that much that I seem bummed out about the, the fumble. Because I am, I, w I would like to do these things perfectly, especially when they're that simple. Bugs me that it was that simple and I still missed it, but. Deleting the trash. And that's all we got for today. So I am not going to somehow code uh, to tape sex that's way too big for me right now but by next week i should be better enough that i'll be able to do it instead i will say good day and i will talk to you later i'll go into the the corner i will go into the corner and shame and say goodbye for the day and i'll see you folks later bye